Hey, welcome everybody. It is afternoon on Thursday. Um, this was kind of weird. I I had to reinitialize my um, my Streamlabs, and by doing so, when you click it, it, it automatically goes live. I didn't even have to go into the YouTube studio and uh, go live. So that's good to know. That could have been awkward, but uh, nothing, no, no harm, no foul on that. No big deal. I was just making some coffee, so I just had my um, you know stream thing going on in the background, saying it's, it's starting. Let me close that out there. Okay, so the title already triggered you, triggered you, sir. Good, it should. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to trigger people. And the funniest part was, you know, <laughs> I actually had people on my Facebook page that were triggered by the word triggered because they were telling me that it should only be used in a medical sense. And it's like, wait a minute here. Now, words have different usages. They're polysemous. Um, I have no problem with people using sensolato terminology and, and very generic usage. There's no big deal. It's, I'm not against that. It's just be consistent and, and know the framework with you're working with. And there's nothing wrong with using trigger the way I'm using it because it does seem to trigger lack of belief atheist. And I don't mean it in a PTSD medical or clinical sense. If we were having a discussion using medical terminology, then yes, I would use it differently. Clearly, right? So... Oh, my coffee is not as warm as I would like it to be. Oh, well, what am I going to do? Anyways, I'm not really camera ready, so I put the um, the Venn Knoll uh, diagram up there. I kind of realize it's kind of difficult to see, but whatever. Um, I'm just, I'm not going on camera today. Uh, bad hair day, let's just call it that. Uh, I listened to Cheshire and, and didn't flat iron it. And I don't know, man. It just doesn't work for me. I don't know. It just, I got frizzy hair. But anyways, um, let me know if you guys can hear. Everything's fine. Everything's copacetic. You guys can see. Uh, this is not going to be a long show, I don't think. Of course, every time I say that, um, I tend to be in error. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see. Uh, if I go 45 minutes to an hour at most, I, I don't think this is a very long topic. That's the only reason why. So, I, mean, I can't imagine it unless we start talking about something else. But... And we'll see how it goes. Oh, you know what? I just realized my thing is all messed up here. Let me fix my label here. It's too, it's too big. It's too big. There we go. No, no, no sexual comments on that, people. Let me put that down here. That way it's out of the way from the uh, chat box. All right. So this is going to be part two uh, of my blog where... I have uh, kind of come up with things that I think, for some reason, for some reason unbeknownst to me, that uh, athe lack of belief atheists get triggered. It's not all atheists. Clearly, you know, most of my audience is atheists. I mean, my co-hosts are atheists. Um, I deal with a lot of atheists because I, I tend to be on the, the non-theists. I mean, I'm a non-theist, so I tend to be on the atheist side of that, I guess. But I, I want atheists to be better in their argumentation. And so when I see atheists say some really stupid shit, I, I just go, wait a minute here, you know, you're doing the same thing that you see a creationist do, you're doing the same thing that you see a younger, you know, younger creationist do, or a flat earther. And if we don't, like, call it out, then who will, right? I mean, I mean, would you rather have, like, somebody who's at least not atheist say, hey, look, you might have a problem with your logical system here, or theist to do it in real time and kind of make you look silly, right? So, anyways... Uh, if you don't believe me that these are triggering, uh, go look at my Facebook. Uh, people are seriously triggered by some of this stuff, and they don't even address the um, the argument. They really don't. It gets all personal and shit. It's like, Steve, you're just a big poopy head. You're a meanie, and you, you think you're so smart. It's never, hey, you know what? This is right. Um... Atheists need to stop doing this, right? You don't see that. I, I don't get it. Um, or uh, my... my primary Facebook page, my main public page, it's, you shouldn't use the word triggered. I mean, come on. I mean, I, look, I'm not politically correct. I've never claimed to be, be politically correct. I, has anybody ever heard me say that I am PC, that I'm woke? Ever. I, I don't believe that I have. If I have, please tell me where this occurred. I'd like to know. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't tell people that I'm, I'm politically correct by any stretch of imagination. So... So, all right, so let's kind of dive into this. Again, this is going to be part two. Uh, I have three, and I might have a four. Um, this is going to be on Atheism Can't Be True and Consistent Logical Systems. I kind of updated the title because, uh, I, I, yes, it is a little more provocative, but it is it is follows. It follows from the argument. So, did my live chat get stuck? You guys is really quiet. This is unusual. Someone say something. You're making me nervous here. So... 
All right, so let me just dive right into this. If you guys haven't read it yet, I left the link in the video description, but I think some of you have. Uh, How to Trigger Atheist Part 2. Another interesting thing I found that triggers lack of belief atheists is when you point out that they have an inconsistent logical system. That means that any given pre- system of premises that cannot all be true at the same time. Okay, so basically an inconsistent logical system would be if I have a bunch of premises and there's an impossibility of them all being true at the same time. That's an inconsistent logical system. You see it with like, um, sim- uh, was it um, uh, simulation theory? Right, that's the premise behind that is that they all can't be true, and you see it very uh, often in moral theories that you know, given all these different conditions, something has to give, something can't be true, and it's a really good way to argue too. It's like, okay, here's my premises; um, they all seem to be true, but they all can't be true, and those are a great way to form arguments. So, nothing wrong with that as long as you understand that that is an inconsistent logical system because that's your argument. It's like something has to give, right? So, example, a square has only four sides, and a square has only three sides. Um, somebody had pointed out that a square has three or more sides, so even though I don't think it's really germane to the argument, I decided to put it only, just to eliminate any kind of objection. So, here's two premises. A square has four sides, and a square has three sides. Clearly, or only three sides, clearly one of these arguments has to be wrong, right? I mean, one of these premises. I mean... They both it cannot have only four or only three sides. It's either one or the other. Now, we know that a square is defined prescriptively as a two-dimensional object that has four sides of equal length that has four right angles, right? And again, that is a descriptive, I mean, that's a prescriptive definition. That's more than just pre- uh, description, right? That's just not saying, hey, if you meet, do this, we're describing some kind of a object. It is a mathematical thing that says, look, this is how we're going to define a square in maths. So you have to understand the difference between prescriptive and descriptive in that context. I, I see a lot of people looking at the dictionary and go, oh, look, here's a word, here's the definition. Well, that definition already describes something. If I had the definition of square equals um, shape, okay, well, yeah, a square is a shape. Is this, does that it describe something? Yeah, it describes it as a shape. Does it tell me anything about it? No. Does it give me what the conditions are, the necessary and sufficient conditions for what a square would be? No. Right, a, a shape does not tell me the necessary and sufficient conditions. Now, would it be necessary? Sure, a shape would be necessary for a square. Is it sufficient? Clearly not. Right, sufficiency would be something along the lines of two-dimensional object with four uh, equal sides with four right angles, uh, internal right angles. That would be a more akin to be what we would consider constitutive of a stipulative. Uh, now, you know, not even stipulative, a prescriptive definition. So you got to be real careful when dealing with, with these definitional arguments because people are like, oh, well, the dictionary says this. Who cares? Dictionary just describes things. It's, it's descriptive. You can't make a, 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 a definitive case for what's necessary and sufficient out of a description. It doesn't work that way. You can only do it out of a prescriptive uh, definition. All right, boy, maybe longer than we thought because I'm only in the first freaking sentences and, and we're already into us uh, for. Like, 10 minutes. All right, so one of those propositions has to be false, as there's a contradiction of both one and two are true. I mean, I think this is pretty self-explanatory, right? Both can't be true. Uh, I'll give you a hint. One of them is true. Um, most people that have a geometry could probably figure out which one it is. All right, so it continues. Um, lack of belief atheist will all, often say that atheism is not a proposition but merely responds to a theist proposition in that they merely do not believe that the proposition of atheism excuse me, the proposition of theism is true. They would be correct. Now, don't say that often there, okay? They would be correct that merely refusing P as in not accepting. Now, I'm going to throw this out there. Not accepting and rejecting are not the same thing in logics that I, I've discovered. Um, the, re, the term reject, from what I, I everything I found... Uh, c- kind of conforms what's called the Freg Geach rejectionism, which is the acceptance of negation or the belief of negation. Um, so there is a difference between merely not accepting and actually rejecting. Uh, rejecting. If I reject it, it's not just like I don't accept your resume. I reject it. That's not acceptance in that term. But in logic, when I say reject P, it is to hold P as false. Gen- gen- generally speaking, I haven't seen it really used any other way. However, I've been told people will use it that way in 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 certain context, and that's fine. Um, so there might be papers out there that use it in the non-acceptance way, but typically I have found it's the Freg Geach rejectionism where you hold the proposition to be false. So I use them very distinctively different. 
And I think it just makes sense too, right? Because, um, and I and I and I asked in the Facebook group for the non, the Great Debate community, what do you think is a good way to say non acceptance? And I think it's refuse p, right? So if I say I refuse p, that just means I'm not accepting p. It doesn't mean I'm saying it's false, as opposed to rejecting p, where you believe that it's false, or denying p, where you're asserting that it's false. And there is some argument to be had of the difference between denying p and rejecting p. Denying P uh, seems to imply some kind of assertive force that you're asserting it is the case that um, that the proposition is false, rather than merely relating some kind of dosastic status of yourself. Right? If I just have a, a dosastic, if I just relating my dosastic state, saying here's my autobiographical uh, situation, I'm just doing a self-referential thing to me, saying, hey, look, I believe that this is the case. I'm not asserting it with any kind of assertive force as saying that I have to demonstrate it to you or prove it to you or, or anything like that, um, there's something to be had for that. Because, again, I, I think it makes sense to say I want to be able to tell you what my beliefs are without making any kind of assertive state, uh, assertive statement. Now, there, there's a lot of thought on that, obviously, right? Some people say, look, if you believe something, you're making a statement about reality. You're making a claim. Sure, but I might actually, to me, just might be making a self-referential thing and just telling you descriptively what my beliefs are. So I, I think there's a reason to have a, a, a distinction between these things. Again, people always talk to me about how their system is so nuanced, and yet when I give them systems that are nuanced, which which seems typical in the literature, they, they look at me like, oh, you're just obfuscating. You know, and it's like, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm actually being more precise, I think, you know. So <clears throat> I am watching the live chat. Mike Ortiz says, according to Darth Doc, is that, you know, as soon as somebody says, according to Darth Doc, is you know it's going to be good, right? You just know it's going to be good. Quote, not accepting equals denying. And that is clearly not the case, right? I mean, yeah. So I don't know anybody that believes that, Mike. Um, Darth is just... I, uh, citation, please, right? Um, now, he could make the argument... And I don't think he, he knows this, Mike. Uh, but he could make the argument there is something called negation raising. And negation raising is where you say something like, I don't believe P would indicate... In, in more of a... Um, it's, it's kind of a, uh, in a way, a speech act theory. It's, it's kind of like a, a persecutionary act that the hearer is, is going to tr treat that as, I believe it's not true, right? I mean, they raise it from the negation. They raise it from not belief to believe not. And so that's called negation raising. We do it all the time. And it's just a effect in the English language. When, you know, when I say, hey, do you think you're going to go to the party, Mike? And Mike says, yeah, I don't think so. He's basically telling me he's not going to the party, right? He's telling me he thinks he's not going to party. So in, in linguistics, that Darth might have, uh, you know, at least a marginal argument. But again, let's just stick to one single domain of discourse. And, and, and in logic, of course, he's completely wrong. Yeah. Uh, Jamie says, are you saying esoteric? No, I don't think so. For what? Uh, um and yes, Sarah, they can be both true with paraconsistent logic, but paraconsistent logic is in classical logic, and paraconsistent logic only allows for true contradictions without principle of explosion. Um, but I, I, even here, I think there would be a principle of explosion. Um, but again, yeah, paraconsistent logic would allow for true contradictions. I don't, I, I, this, to me, would be a really true contradiction for both of these to be the case, right? I'm not sure how that even work. In um, paraconsistent logic, but uh, all right. So they would be correct in merely refusing and not accepting the proposition of theism is true. Would indeed mean atheism is not propositional. Okay, so if I just hold a uh, proposition, atheism is a lack of belief. It's not propositional at that point. Oh, oh, esoteric. Yeah, not not assert. Yeah, assert. Uh, assert uh, esoteric means uh, or assertic means uh, with force. Right. Yeah, that's all it means. So when I say it's esoteric, it means I'm asserting it with some kind of force to it. Rather than just, you know, a descriptive type thing. I thought he said esoteric. I was like, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, Asatoric. So, uh, to assert. And by the way, I love people asking questions. If you got questions, by all means, ask. Um, it keeps me on my toes, too. Because sometimes I forget some things, right? And I'm like, oh, shoot, what is a, a proper way to describe something? You know, it is, it is not always easy to um, explain some of these concepts. So uh, asoteric force would be uh, like you make a, a declarative statement. Like, you know, I am tall. I'm making a declarative statement that is the case that I am tall. There's an assert assertion being made. So that has assertic force. 
Uh, okay, so um, would indeed mean would mean atheism is not propositional, but a psychological state of unbelief. Unbelief just means that you don't believe. That's it. Doesn't mean that you deny it. Doesn't mean you reject it. Doesn't mean you believe it's false. It means that you just don't believe it. But that is a, a psychological state. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. That is all seemingly logically consistent so far. Again, this is how I'm looking at it. If somebody has some other views, please let me know. But if you come at it from a psychological point of view, I'm probably going to go, I have no idea. Um, I don't deal with the psychological aspects of these things. I don't, de- I don't um, know anything about dual processing theory. I don't know anything about um, you know, brain states and psychological stuff. Don't del- dive into any of it. So I'm sticking in one domain right here. But going on. Um, but then that would mean if atheism is not propositional, that atheism cannot be true or false. It's only a proposition can be true or false. And that's, that's a really simplistic way of looking at it. Uh, a proposition can have two values in classical logic. It is true or false. It can have more and multi-valued logics, like three-valued logics, like T, F, and U, where U is unknown. But in classical logic, you only get two and false. And so... If there's no proposition to be had, like, for example, in theism, the proposition is at least one God exists or just God exists, that's either true or false. It is either the ontological condition that God exists or it is not the ontological condition that God exists. There is no middle ground to be had there. Your beliefs, however, that can vary. There is a lot of other ground there. But uh, as far as whether God exists or not, that's that's a dichotomy. Right? It's a binary state. So it is propositional. Theism is propositional. And I don't even think atheists balk at that. I mean, they uh, maybe occasionally would be like theist, you know, is a psychological belief. Okay, but we're not talking about psychological beliefs. We're talking about how a theist would evaluate the proposition of God existing, right? So that is a propositional belief. A psychological belief is merely a mental status, not a proposition Oh, what that can be not a propositional that what that what that can hold a true value. Note, I tend to capitalize Boolean states, but this is merely pure personal preference, as I think it reads easier. Again, um, when I when I when you see something like this or like um, uh, this, I tend to capitalize true and false in my blogs, and that's only for readability. There's no there's no reason other than that that I can see. I just think it, it reads better because in Boolean it stands out more because you're looking at oh look it is true or false right. So let me know what you guys think of that if that if that makes it read easier because I, I sure think it does. You know, hang on I need some coffee here one sec. Ah, okay. This leads to two propositions: atheism is not propositional. Atheism cannot be true or false. If atheism cannot be true or false, then it cannot be false by, by conjunction of elimination. And this is a very simple thing to saying, look, P, um, you know what? I made a mistake here. Do you guys see my mistake? Do you see my mistake? How many people read this stuff and they don't catch a very simple, logical mistake? Oh, no, no, that isn't. No, I did make a mistake. No, you know what? Never mind. I, I, I thought I had a mistake, but I didn't. This is not supposed to be a disjunctive syllogism. Uh, it's a conjunctive elimination. See, even I even I mess up. Um, so this is supposed to be and. You normally I write P or Q because that's going to be a, a disjunctive syllogism. But in this case is tr- correct. Or I was right. I was wrong about being wrong. What does that make me? Somebody has to find a word for that. Can we get a word for for somebody who was wrong about being wrong? Steve was wrong about being wrong. He was actually right. Well, that's inception level stuff right there, right? That's like. You know, maybe like the principle of eternity verity is, you know, can God make a rock so heavy he can't lift it, which is actually resolvable. But, you know, is Steve wrong for being wrong when he was actually right, when he was wrong about being wrong? I don't know. So we have to think about that. Yeah, I, well, I thought I was wrong once, but I was wrong. Yeah, I was, I was mistaken. All right, so P and Q. Therefore, P. Now, this is perfectly fine. This is conjunction elimination. You're just saying, hey, look, you got two, uh, you got uh, a conjunction of and, and B. Therefore, A. You can you can eliminate the one. Now, to prove that, I, I found out using natural logic checker requires a little bit more than just this, but we'll go with that. So, if you have a, a conjunction, you can take either of the conjuncts. Um, so, it's either raining outside. Therefore, it's raining outside. It's either raining outside and wet, therefore it's raining outside. Because obviously, if both of these true, what they both have to be true, right? So if it's out, if it's raining outside and wet, it's true. It's raining outside and it's true. It's wet, right? Yeah, my mind's blown right now. This is the shit that I stay awake thinking about, Smitty. Welcome to my life. Um, 
All right, so given atheism cannot be true or false is logically the same as, quote, atheism cannot be true and atheism cannot be false, uh, not A and B is logically equivalent to not A um, and not B. So example, uh, a square cannot have two or three sides equals a square cannot have two sides and a square cannot have three sides. That's it. That's how you do the con conjunct. This makes sense, right? If I say a square cannot have two or three sides, it is logically the same thing, same thing as saying a square cannot have two sides and a square has, cannot have three sides. At least I hope this is correct. If there's any logisticians out there that have anything more precise than this, please let me know, and I'll fix this in the blog. Again, I do these at 3 o'clock in the morning, people. All right. So by conjunction of elimination, which is basically you have two statements for an and, you can eliminate one of them, and you get the other one, right? So now we have two derived propositions. Atheism is not propositional. Atheism cannot be true. Both of these propositions clearly then both can be true, right? Because if, if atheism is not propositional, then uh, two can't be true. It can't be false either. If, if atheism is not propositional, there's nothing to be true or false. So if atheism is not propositional, atheism cannot be true. Can't be false either, and, but neither can theism, right? Well, I guess you can still have theism as propositional, but... It would be kind of—it's kind of odd, or say, odd for me to say, "Oh, theism is propositional, but atheism is not." I mean, they, they're clearly dichotomous relationships uh, of sorts, right? They're—they're—they're they're, they're a um, contra, contradictory of each other, right? If atheism is true, then theism has to be false, and if theism is false, atheism has to be true. One of them has to be true. Both can't be tr both true. Both can't be both false. If—and I'm talking about the belief. I got in a discussion with somebody there on my Facebook uh, group. And I think they were not giving me any principal charity. When I say, like, B not P is false, I'm not talking about the belief, uh, not the person not having the belief. I'm talking about the belief being a false belief. So when, I, when we say atheism is, is, is not true or atheism is false, that would imply that God exists, right? If I say theism is not true, that would be that God doesn't exist, right? Because if God doesn't exist, the belief itself is, is false. So I, I, that's how I look at it. So you guys with me so far? Let me give a, a, a quick spot check here. Do you guys agree that if atheism is not propositional, then atheism cannot be true and it cannot be false, right? Because only propositions can hold a truth value. You guys good with the argument so far? One, if yes. Two, if no. Three, you're so confused and you wonder what the hell you're doing here. Um, or combination thereof. You can have both one and three. I don't mind. Or two and three if, if you really think this doesn't make sense. So... If an atheist says atheism is not a proposition, but merely a response to one, which I think is ridiculous, but whatever, then you can tell them, if that is the case, then atheism cannot be true. If they don't see, if they don't then see they have to reject at least one or two, they are in a state of irrationality with an inconsistent belief system. Since for two to be true, one has to be true. That is called a necessary prerequisite. Right in the tag argument um, for like transcendental argument for God, they try to argue God exists by some necessary precondition. Well, there are transcendental arguments that are good that don't have to do with God. One of which would be something along the lines: if X is a pre, if an X is a necessary prerequisite for Y, and Y exists, then X has to exist. Right? Think about that. If X is a prerequisite for Y and Y does exist, then we know X has to exist. That's that's called a transcendental argument. So, since for for two to be the case um, cannot be true, then it's not propositional. It's transcendental. Um, since for two to be true, one has to be true. If they accept one, they must accept two. If they accept one and reject two, they have an inconsistent logical system. And they end up with atheism is not propositional. Atheism can be true, which clearly is inconsistent. That is an inconsistent logical system because both of them cannot be true. Where we clearly... Where clearly both of these premises cannot be true. If one is true, then two is false. And atheism can't be true. Then as soon as you tell the lack of belief atheist that using their system of premises, atheism can't be true, the triggering usually and inevitably ensues, as is often the case of having an ir irrational, incoherent system, systems of belief. So... Um, if you don't believe this, uh, you're more than willing, uh, excuse me, more than welcome to uh, try it out. I, again, I don't recommend going around pissing people off. That's my job. Don't, don't take what I do. Um, but if you really wish to, uh, just go into an atheist group and um, say, hey, look, atheism can't be true. And see who agrees with you and see who doesn't, right? And, and you, if you really want to be honest, cause if you, which I, I highly recommend, don't, don't be dishonest in these groups. 
Um, people always accuse me of dishonesty, and it's ridiculous because I'm like the most legit, straightforward truth person in, in these groups, and they don't seem to realize it. Like I had some of the other day argue, and I'm not even kidding here, people. I'm not kidding. They are argue that math is subjective. That math is subjective. That A equals A is subjective. That 0.99 repeating equals 1 isn't even true, more or less uh, uh, objective. When I see somebody who says math is subjective, I automatically know that I'm dealing with an irrational person. And so how do you have effective communications with somebody who's irrational? I don't really believe you can. Now, that's just my personal view. Other people, like I think like uh, maybe um, Joe from Answers and Reason um, and Dave, they might disagree. They might think, hey, look, persons are rational, but maybe we can have a rational conversation with them. Maybe, maybe not. I, I just, I personally kind of can't, right? Because I don't want to waste my time with somebody who's irrational. I do value my time. I spend a lot of time writing stuff. I spend a lot of time doing stuff. I spend a lot of time helping people. Um, and I'm not going to waste it with somebody who says stupid shit like, oh, math is, is subjective. I mean, I don't know where you go with that. What, 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 do you guys think that it makes sense to say something like math is a subjective when that is like logic and math are like the two most objective things in the world, right? Given the set of axioms, anybody can come up with the same um, conclusions with logic, right? You don't need to have anything to do with subjectivity. So, by the way, did anybody say one or two or three? I didn't see a single. Okay, I saw some threes. Yeah, well, Smitty, I always wonder what Smitty's doing here anyways, but yeah, that that one's consistent with Smitty, but I only saw like two threes. So I, I would assume you guys are following this then. So, yeah, so Sarah says you can trigger them by just starting with atheism can't be true, and that's the point. But I, again, to be honest, I, the whole reason why I said about being honest, go in and say, look, um, I don't necessarily hold to this position, but what do you guys think about this? Atheism can't be true. Now, the lack of belief atheists, to be consistent... There's other reasons to disagree with them, but to be consistent would say, yes, that's true. Atheism can't be true because it's merely response, or it's non-propositional, or psychological, whatever nonsense BS they want to say. Um, or you might have somebody say, oh, that's nonsense. A atheism, of course, can be true. You know, you're theist, uh, Jesus-loving, uh, you know, whatever. I got accused of that the other day. I'm, I'm a, obviously a Jesus freak, and I wasn't aware of this. So news to me. Why don't you guys let me know of these things? Look, if I'm a Jesus freak, I need to know these things. You know, I have my mods, and I have my, my subs, and I have my members, and I have my Patreons, and I have people I've known for years. If I'm a Jesus freak, one of you guys should have told me this by now. Like, like one of you. I'm, I'm really kind of, uh, you know, scared to think that I might be a Jesus freak and be unaware of that. So keep me on my toes with that. But yeah, go in there and, and tell them that. Um, and then uh, they say, look, you know, atheism is merely response. It's merely a lack of belief. Then say, well, how can it be true? And you they'll, they'll, it, it, watch them lose their minds. They'll, they'll, all kinds of stuff. Oh, well, you know, theism has never proven God exists, blah, blah, blah. They never get to the understanding that, look, if atheism is not propositional, it can't be true. Not all of them. I, I will admit, all cards on the table, there have been some lack theists that get it. That have said, yes, you're right. This is a very good argument. You're right. No big deal, but I, I accept that. Okay, good. What are you going to do? I'm, I, those are not the people I'm worried about. At least they're consistent. right? There, there's other things about their usages I can definitely get into, obviously. But I, I, for this purpose of this argument, I am strictly going from, are they being logically consistent? Because this is what Chester and I do, and I do all the time. Is your system consistent? You know, we don't give a shit really what people believe and don't believe as much as are they consistent about it. Now, I mean, not necessarily the case. I, I mean, I do care what they believe, right? But it's it, to me, if somebody has a, a an inconsistent system, then they haven't really thought things through. Now, do I think that we all have some kinds of inconsistencies? Yes, but we all try to minimize them and we all try to reevaluate things all the time. A lot of us are thinkers. Um, and I know I'm going to get shit for that. Steve thinks he's smart. I don't give a fuck whether I think I'm smart or not. It's a matter of I do a lot of thinking. I write a lot of stuff. I mean, this is, this is clearly you know, something that is self-evident because I, I write blogs. I do videos. I do a lot of thinking. Uh, and I know that people that, that watch my stuff, they do a lot of thinking. They, I get messages all the time. Hey, I'm up late at night. What do you think of this? What do you think of this? I have this argument for this all the freaking time. Many of you in the audience have, have come to me for that. Um, Cheshire says, I try to tell him, but Steve McCray doesn't listen to women. You're not a woman, from what I understand, Cheshire, so you don't count. You know? When you become a woman, Cheshire, then let me know, and I'll start taking your advice. By the way, if you want to come in, you're more than welcome to. I'm, I've kind of done the presentation, so um, I, I could 
easily start a um, a meeting here. So let, let me do that real quick, just in case. Uh, let me get to the right person. I always got to make sure I send the right message to the right thing because it's awkward if I don't. Um, you know, I'm talking to like some other girl or something like that. <laughs> and I keep telling them, I, I might have actually sent this to the Cheshire instead because your thing's right next to me. I had to double check, and that that would be odd. You know, that'd be awkward. So, Cheshire, if you ever get a weird message from me that just sounds really out of place, it's just because the IMs are so close together. Uh, don't don't freak out or anything. All right, so that there's that, and there's your your link, and then I'll let you in. Cameras off and turn on the desktop sounds and there we go. So you're welcome to come in now um, All right, so anyways, uh, where are we at on this uh, particular argument? Do you think it's got you guys think it's a good argument? You think it's a valid argument? Um, I mean I do I, I do I, I, I again, it's something that you really can't ar uh, Reasonably argue against right? I mean and look if somebody says atheism is not propositional then sure atheism can't be true but the the point is, is they get so triggered by that, right? When you go say atheism can't be true. Now I don't hold any of that, right? I think atheism it can be true or false because I treat it as a proposition. Because as we all know, that whole lack of belief nonsense is crap. But whatever. Um, so, Chester, do you want to pop in real quick? Give your two cents. Anybody else want to pop in? Give me a shout, and I will give you the link and get you guys two cents on this. Um, but let me read the. Uh, Live chat here. Uh, Sean says, I just came across a good argument for atheist existentialism. Seconds ago, satire's existentialism is humanism. Or satire's uh, existentialism is humanism. Um, I am not familiar with it. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really heavy into existentialism. I do think absurdism uh, has, has some points, though. Um, if you guys don't know what absurdism is, it's basically the position of, hey, man wants to have this continuous seeking of, of, of value for their, his life. And meaning and cause and, and we're just not finding anything um, and I think there's a point to be had by that look I've, I've sat and I've, I've reduced did a reduction down to the bare basics like any other person who ever philosophized and nothing works there's this nothing works every system that you could possibly come up with has issues to it um, and honestly that sucks it really sucks because I mean, there's just no good answers for this stuff. So you, you kind of take what you can get and throw away the what rest. But anyways, we have a wild Cheshire appeared. Let me uh, while you talk Cheshire, let me put you on the big screen here. Hello. Oh, you're so light in your vo your voice. Hello, what up with that? Is that a little Is bit that better? You? Let me uh, fix this. Is that might be me talk. I don't know. I, I moved my microphone. I had it okay. kind of far away from me. No, so no, that's good. That's I moved good. it closer. Yeah, no, no, that's really good. All right. So what? So what do you think of this particular Hello. argument? And like I said, I'll, I'll put you on the big uh, screen. I think that it's funny that some people get upset or annoyed or offended that Steve is being a little bit intentionally inflammatory. It's like it's it's a title. It's a it's a clickbaity title, and people are like, "Oh, you're just trying to make things pe people mad, and you're a bad person because of that." It's like the, this <laughs> but is a reason this for is that, an right? enter we entertain people. That's part of the that's part of it. Like, it, 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 <laughs> what are you new? There's definitely a reason for it, right? I mean, it's it's obviously the case that um, you know you want to get people's attention and you want them to to, to be yeah. kind of shocked a little bit, right? I mean, nothing wrong with that. I'm explaining things in detail and. You know, yeah, I, I, because it's not wrong. I mean, I don't, I don't like clickbait that's completely wrong, right? I can't stand when people well, lie I, in their titles. Atheists do the exact same thing when you do something like, oh, uh, I don't know, if you say something about flat Earth or it's like, oh, ten questions atheists can't answer. You're yeah, like trying exactly. to grab their attention so they watch your thing, yeah. right? Like this isn't, this isn't like rocket science. This is like basic algorithmic type conversation yeah no I'd, I'd have no issue with it whatsoever but again have you noticed though when they really don't have anything to um argue against anything it always comes somehow becomes something some really stupid uh rebuttal or rejoinder they have for some reason like again yeah, it's I mean, funny i mean somebody was <laughs> and, and i don't mean any disrespect to this person that was telling me i mean i, I really don't because i i mean i, I kind of know they are and I, I but they were like you know you can't use the word trigger because it's a medical thing. It's, you know, PTSD. I'm like, that's the thing like, that everybody yeah. is mad at you for, though. You can't use this word. 
The hell I can't. Yeah. I can use whatever <laughs> word I damn well please. Yeah, and that's kind of the point, right? It's like, you're, you're, they're telling me what I can and cannot use for some strange reason. You can say, like, hey, listen, this word means this in this context. I don't think this is the best word to use. Or, like, you ought or ought not to use whatever word. But they're, they're, they're like, dictatorial about it. And it's, it's ridiculous to me. And it's not, like, the first time we... It's one of those things where they just project that. And so it's like, oh, well, we want to be able to tell other people what to say. But other people can't tell us what we should say and it's like but nobody's even telling you what you can and cannot say you saw this with the whole uh aca flipping the hell out over the aai the absolute nonsense well, ridiculous real quick uh for some reason um i can't i can't get it to capture the screen so you're all the all the effort you went in looking pretty today is not going to come through sorry Oh, I was already I was already on a stream today, so everybody already saw me. Oh, okay, okay. So I was it's, talking it's, about it's not I was talking about some silliness and a little bit of drama while I was just playing Pokemon. Now I'm playing Minecraft. I got a village. I have this cute little mushroom house. You know, um, I've no I've noticed that uh, there has been on Facebook, especially people go. Steve tells people how to use words, and, and anybody who's ever watched me said, you know, knows that's quite the opposite. And I'm like, look, use words any way you want. Just, you know, I'm just saying, there's if you're inconsistent, I'm be pointing it out, but don't tell me how to use words. And they're like, well, we're not telling you to do that, but you're just using them wrong. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm not even kidding. That's exactly what they say. You know, I, they, I literally have people tell me your argument is flawed because it uses the wrong definitions, which is the most absurdly that's, stupid things in, in the world your, your argument got any definitions you want that's your argument i would be i would be yeah i would i would be very hard pressed to not ask why why what is the semantic issue with either my argument or your argument because that's what that turns into right so it's either my argument has a problem due to semantics or your argument has issues due to semantics. So, like, if I'm refuting your argument and your response to my refutation is that's just semantics, well, what about it? Yeah. It, like, explain that. Because if it's... Uh, it's uh, that's ridiculous. Well, I don't even know what they mean. I don't think they even know what they mean by it's semantics. Um, if I say theist or not theist, and I'm just going to say th not theist means dog. Theist or dog, not not theist, therefore dog. That's semantics because you're just replacing stuff, right? It's, that's a valid disjunction. You know, that, that right. you can definitely do that. But what good does that do? Okay, sure, under your schema, if I'm not a theist, I'm a dog. Yippee. That's semantics. But, yeah, it's not helpful. Yeah, it's not helpful. But the logic, theist or not theist, that's 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 logic. That's not semantics. You can't, you can't derive anything past that. But I can get to that point using logic. So yeah, for them to say it's semantics is ridiculous because this my whole wasp argument is not semantics. It's if then well, else, which is logic. It's it's fallacious. It's a fallacious. Well, because I don't think they have any the, other way the, to defeat they're it. They're misunderstanding the point on purpose or by accident, and so, like we've said before, there's nothing wrong with a argument to semantics. It, the problem is, is when it's a fallacious argument to semantics. Like, there's, there's nothing wrong with having argumentation based on semantics. Oh, absolutely That's not. Fine. Yeah. Oh, it, the whole Wittgenstein based his career on on that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, private language argument, beat on a box, um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. rural paradox. Um, he, his whole thing is comes from linguistics, and so yeah, I, I think semantics is a very fascinating thing, especially when you're dealing with semantic arguments of 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 truth or Tarski's uh, arguments, which are way out of, way out of my league. So don't, don't ask me about Tarski's uh, semantics. But um, yeah, that's a whole separate field, mm -hmm. and they're very interesting. But to say an argument is a semantic argument is to to basically demean the argument away from what actually it is. You know, I, I, like for example, I I don't know if you guys want. Again, I'll ask live chat. It's a misidentification. I I, I had put a modus ponens uh, in one of the or actually two in the Facebook groups. I think it was. And no, it was a modus tollens, I'm sorry. And um, a lot of people were, were not understanding the, the way a modus tollens works. And so uh, they were like, oh, you're just putting these words in there. They're for semantics. It's like, no, this is a logical format. Semantics has nothing to do with logical validity. Right? If P then Q, just P putting... therefore Q as a modus ponens, it doesn't give a shit what P and Q are. 
right? This is what I, I'm going to put this on a shirt. Refutation. I'm um, sorry. Rejection is not refutation. Saying I don't accept this doesn't mean you've successfully refuted whatever the person has said. Right. Yeah. And, I, and that when somebody says, tells me oh, I don't accept your argument. Okay, great. Why? And they can't give me a reason. Okay, yeah. moving on. You know, I mean, look, like the other day, it was kind of cool. Somebody had actually put um, an argument out there. And I actually broke down the argument. I said, okay, I accept premise one, I reject premise two, and I reject the conclusion based upon blah, blah, blah. Not just because the, the, the syllogism was wrong, because um, of the fallacy fallacy, right? So a conclusion still can be true. And so you got to be careful mm -hmm. of that. But I broke it down. And it's very rare when somebody says something, but somebody says, that's a good analysis. Right? Because I actually said, so, you know, this is how you should attack an argument. Anybody who says, you're, hey, your premise is wrong because you haven't proven it, I'm done. I'm done with you. I'm not going to waste my time. Or if you stay, uh, if you say for an, a conditional, if you started with if, therefore it's wrong. What? What the hell does that even mean? I mean, that's ridiculous. Um, oh, I'm hearing noises here. What is that? Did you hear that? No, not from your end. It's it's like a sound. Oh, oh, okay. So that was a super chat. <laughs> that was weird. I heard the super chat before I saw it. I'm like, where did that come from? Um, explore her mind. Okay. Where are we? You, did you want to read it? You can. No, go for it. Okay. Uh, exploratory Minds for 20 pounds. Thank you, Exploratory Minds. I do appreciate it. Um, I don't care much for the whole atheist thing, but recognizing that as long as there are there's a way to safely mentally shock people to thinking outside of their own paradigm at least a few times, then there will always be progress. I agree. Like I said, you have to stir the pot every so often. I'm a, Look, I, I admit I throw in some grenades in Facebook groups, and, and I got a lot of shit for it. People hate my guts in those groups sometimes. Steve is a big bad meanie head. He does. He has no pedagogical approach to teaching anything. Which, by the way, I'm not a teacher. Don't don't shit on me for my pedagogical views because I stop I don't do looking teaching. for education on Facebook. Right? What are you doing? Yeah, I'm like I'm like. Look, I'm just. I'm, <laughs> what? I'm, some people have, have said, "Hey, can you explain this to me?" Yes, I can. Oh, that's great. I never thought of it that way. Okay, wonderful. Uh, but I'm not a teacher. I'm not trying to be a teacher. I'm just helping people. Like I have asked many people, "Hey, I don't understand this. Can you explain this to me?" Right. But, but that, that's still that's not, my not shtick, is looking for education on Facebook. Right. I don't trust... If anybody out there that's watching this right now uses a talk show or a Facebook group as their, as their source of education, you are doing it wrong. Yeah. That yeah. is not it's, it's a healthy help you. way to, to educate yours. Now, you could learn about something to then go look at more professional topics or more professional coverage of that topic. So if a YouTube channel talks about something or you have an educational YouTube channel and you're using more than one source. That's fine. Sure, you yeah. can do that. But a, like a talk show or like a, a, no, absolutely not. We want to help educate people when it comes to things. But it, it, like there's a difference between sociology and giving examples and explaining a thing that you can then go look up yourself versus I get my information from a Facebook group and my research from a fa this is this is like stuff mom groups say or like this is how you get anti vaxxers don't don't do that don't do yeah, that thing and, and we all you want to become the, the anti vaxxers right? of the philosophy world don't become the anti vaxxers of the philosophy world don't don't, don't we do also it. tell people hey um, go validate what we say I mean don't take us as face value I mean uh, it's, you know especially when it comes to current events we might get facts wrong okay great we'll correct them oh uh, absolutely yeah. um, but uh, Kimo Maki says, I'll drown the fallacy fallacy in my swamping problem. Is he doing something on the swamping problem? Does anybody, do anybody remember the swamping problem? I've talked about it before. Just, I was like, I don't pay attention to this shit. Swamping problem is Linda Zabeski's argument against I reliabilism. I didn't think we're asking me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's basically she argues against reliabilism that if you have two espresso makers and they both make a good cup of coffee and one's reliable, one's not, does any value, any anything added by having one that's reliable if they both actually made a good cup of coffee? So do do we value anything? Yeah, because having... I want a good cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Well, yeah, but at one time we have, I mean, course... but that one time we had a good cup of coffee doesn't make a difference. It tastes the same. So she argues there's nothing to be how about do you, it by how knowledge. How could you tell if something's reliable or not if you've only used it once? Well, and reliable, but see, reliable, that's the problem with reliabilism. It, it doesn't really add anything of value to saying, look, um, I know this and it's also a just, uh, it's also a true belief. If, whether justified or not, it's true, you know, and so... To say that I know sure. P is it any any more value just having a belief that's true? There's an argument to be had there. By the way, guess who's in the live chat? Trolley Dave. Dave. I love yeah. Trolley Dave. Dave, you are one of my favorite philosophizers. Um, 
He's one of my favorite just straight up people. He's great. I, he's, I mean, honestly, just a great... We made some awesome people on the internet, that's for sure. Yes. Um, There's some cool people that hang around here. We gotta get him a desk, though. Always, we should. Because he always streams we ought, at like a good angle. To. Ought to. It's an ought. We don't have to. It's an ought. We ought to. We ought to. It's a, it's a normative. Yes, it's a normative. Um, so let's see what else we got here. Uh, oh, anyways, yeah, going back to the whole Facebook thing, it's funny because, um, you know, you get those handful of people that just want to shit on you. But I've noticed something. Once you recognize those people, you start recognizing the people that are sort of arguing against them as well and start pointing out, hey, look, you know, you're saying some stupid shit and I still haven't really shown where Steve is wrong. I, even people that say, look, I don't understand any of this, but you're not giving any reason to, to show that Steve's wrong on this, right? That's, that's kind of how I felt about dealing with the, that group of Ayn Rand people. I was just like, I, I don't know if, uh, I'm sure there are better, like I've seen a couple of other, when I was looking into it, I saw a couple of other people that kind of make these arguments a lot better than the people did on, on Twitter. But I mean, it's Twitter, how high are your expectations? <laughs> but at, this, at the same time, though, it's like, stop. <laughs> I, I don't have any expectations on Twitter. It's not even low. It's just non-existent. Right? I think at this point, um, except for people that I know, right? The people that I know, I have expectations from them because. Uh, know, yeah, that's different. But, but yeah, yeah, that's a rapport there. Absolutely, yeah, because we have rapport with them. Um, but yeah, we the, rapport it, them. I yeah. don't think that's how. No, that we works, have a rapport okay. with them. We have a rapport with them. Oh, with them. Yeah. Um, I heard we rapport them. <laughs> like, that's we rapport them. <laughs> my coffee is really kicking in right now by the way i extra letted it today uh, yeah um i've good. been sleeping a lot lately so i really needed to, to, to really wake it's up it's also good it, it is um to some degree i mean as you as you know i guess i can tell people i have i have lost quite a bit of weight um and i think a lot of it's because i'm sleeping i'm not i'm not eating <laughs> but um you know i've been i've been eating really healthy but i Steve's been doing a better job than I have. Well, I didn't hurt myself either. You kind of did, so. That's that's true. I did I did have a pretty severe injury. You're breaking your money maker. I should have gone in stitches. <laughs> I, sh I should have gone to the hospital. We we all that's the problem. None of us take care of ourselves. I need to schedule an appointment. I'm too fucking lazy to do it. Well, I'm not even lazy. I just don't. It's getting down there is so much of a problem because it's all the way in Loma Linda. Um, but I I know I need to. I mean, it's I'm postponing things and I'm postponing things and. And it, things tend to get worse, right? There's a hospital right? down the road. Right. Well, I could have walked there. And they, I, see, you're Canada. On you, my busted you, you, foot. You can go to 7-Eleven and get medical care. <laughs> <laughs> so, Almost, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they just give this shit away. It's all, those, it's all those teachers working double jobs. One of them's working at 7-Eleven, too. Yeah. Well, got to make ends meet, or I those guess. nurses. Sorry, not teachers. N nurses, yeah. But I, 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 I just want people to know the reason why I... I, I a very forthright and direct on Facebook and not the emotional kind of thing is I want to, I want to suss out those people that aren't willing to really have a dialogue. And I, I recognize them really quickly in a group. Um, but then I start talking to the other people. Like I had an admin the other day. He's like, Hey Steve, how do you respond to this charge that, you know, you're just trying to get people to go to your YouTube channel. And I'm like, Oh, that's a great question. Let me answer that. How much do you think I get from a group like this that has two people that might go watch my video for half a cent at most a, a view? And we're talking being, I don't know if you guys know the, the metrics, but it ain't yeah. much. Okay. So let's be generous at half a cent for a view. And they watch the whole freaking thing. Um, so I'm spending an hour, two hours, three hours talking to people in a group to make a penny. That is the worst business model in the history of, of mankind. Not only is that a terrible... A, a terrible business model, but so what if you were, if your point is compelling? Well, it's kind of uh, some of the groups say like no advertisement or crap like that. It's just whatever, but it still was a nonsense. It argument. seems beside the point to me, I think is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I agree with you. I, yeah, but I mean, still, it was, it's a bad argument. And, um, and then I pointed to the, to the direction to the admin. The admin's pretty cool. Um, I said, hey, look, go look at my last comment I just had a minute ago where I literally break down, um, an entire argument and I go into great detail and explain things. I go, does this look like somebody who's trying to drive traffic to his channel rather than actually have the discussions, you know? And uh, of course he's like, no, this is, you know, this is great kind of stuff. I mean, he happens to, I think, agree with me overall on stuff, but, 
But you, but the people will make things so personal in those groups rather than than the arguments. And so, I just do a calling and cultivating. I call the ones that I think are not worth having time with, or I, or I use them examples to the other ones, and then I cultivate the people that really want to talk about these things. And I and it works for me. That's it. Oh, uh, and that's such like a personal thing, right? That it's such a subjective thing about who's gonna waste time talking to whom, right? So like, there's no way you would waste six hours of your life on a stream talking to Gary. But guess what I did? Right, right, exactly. Yeah. It, it, do do I do I find anything objectionable about it? No, no. You might disagree with it, but yeah, don't even. Not even really. Yeah. I not not as much as you think. Um, if you uh, got no, something I don't out think of it, you disagree. I'm, I'm more making the point that you could fully disagree and be like, this is an awful idea. Why would you even think to do this? Da, 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 da. And meanwhile, I'm just like, Meh, I yeah. have my reasons. Yeah. There's a method to my madness. I, and, and, and that's why I, I, I give you my input. I go, look, for me, it wouldn't ever work. I would never do something like this. But for you, knock yourself out. Um, we have to accept people are individuals and everybody has their channels and everybody does things um, for their own method you know method right you have your method it works well for you i have my method it works well for me and people can like both of them hate both of them like one not like the other you know so be it uh but on facebook you know I, i'm not gonna to be this this coddly you know person who coddles uh dumb people who say things like math is subjective i, I can't there's no point and it's also not your group <laughs> that's your mod that's the mod's job to control that kind of yeah. absurdity if that's what they want in their group. Absolutely. Oh, we have another guest uh, who just showed up. Dr. Cross. <gasps> Dr. Cross! I know you're a big fan of I hers too, I want to get you? Dr. Cross on my show. Well, how about how about I toss her? I don't know if she has time, but I'm going to toss her the link um, if she wants to drop in and say hi. Um, I am a huge uh, fan of hers. Have her so. on caffeine. We should have her on Caffeine Corner. Yeah, well, I'm making arrangements for that, um, scheduling stuff. She'll, be, she'll come on Caffeine Corner. I want to talk about nice. some of the... Uh, some of the misconceptions of marijuana use, some of the the, um, the medical stuff on oh, it. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, because that's her, like that. her her real strong expert. I mean, she has a lot of she's one of the people that has a lot of expertise. You might as well just pick one and go with it. But she knows a lot about that particular right. subject. So I want to get her to come on that time of the month at some point. Well, hopefully she'll get pop out of into my this. way, you stupid cat. Maybe she'll pop into this hangout Thank and you. you can ask her. Like I said, I am a huge fan. I I have watched some of her videos. Some of her her science videos are even way beyond beyond me, but they're fascinating. But I like her approach, um, as you know as well as I do. I I like that kind of style, um, and so hell yeah. yeah. She says, "Love you guys." My partner said I'd fit in better here, as opposed to somewhere else. I would imagine, but uh, yes, where you're welcome. We we like people like that, Doctor Cross. We we want people with opinions, agree, disagree. We don't give a shit. We just want people to be consistent. We want people to be informed. We want people to uh, promote good science. Uh, mathematics and philosophy. That's what we do here. Uh, we don't like the drama stuff, although occasionally we have to discuss it only because, well, it's part of the being on YouTube. It sucks. There is, and there's some shitty people I out like there. I like some of the drama stuff in my private life. She's a lot, yeah, see, <laughs> so here's like, the thing. She's a I lot mean, more into that than I, I was, am. People don't get that. She really I was, kind of thrives more on it. So there's a, yeah, there's a beef going on on Twitter where Red's Rhetoric is talking about suing Unirock and he's talking about it on Twitter. And I was talking about that today, but I was talking about it as I was like just chilling out playing video games. I wasn't like doing a video about it, right? Like that's just No, you're just having the old school hangouts we used to have where people just talk about stuff. Like usually on Discord. Yeah, I was just hanging out. We on Discord? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, I was just by myself. No. Yeah, because remember the old days we just kind of hang out on the Discord and do that. Well, I mean, I didn't hang out with you then. That no, was before me. I, that's true. That's true. But many of the other people might remember. You hate Discord anyway. Well, I do, but it was, it was something we used back then at least more than we do now. I, I, I only go to the Atheist uh, Community of Austin. Well, it's not even the Atheist Community of Austin Discord anymore. You know they changed it. It's now the Atheist Community of Discord. Oh, I, I'm not even okay. kidding. They they literally changed it, um, and I, I don't know the exact funny, reason, but, okay. but um, yeah, who knows? I think it was to get away from the ACA because they because they yes. felt like they were being controlled <laughs> by their rules, kind of thing, and um, maybe they were kind of like you know, uh, no, we want to be able to have discussions, and you can kind of tell us what we can and cannot talk about. So yeah, that's fair. Um, Jamie asked if I'm a cat person. I, I do like cats. Cats are cool. I like cats. Uh, some cats are assholes. Some cats are cool. I was yelling at the cat that I have in my game 
who was pushing me and had they pushed me further i could have died in lava so i do not appreciate this cat getting in my way in minecraft <laughs> oh speaking of which uh we gotta get that uh, phd uh, guy on who wrote wrote yeah. some of the code for minecraft or fix some of the problems with minecraft you know whatever, whatever his name was yes so can, maybe you're going to reach out and make that happen and i'll uh, oh, i'll okay. get dr cross Are on, you putting and that on me on. now i thought you were talking to him is this my job now well i mean you know more about minecraft than i do so what does you know more about programming than i do what's your point <laughs> what i mean i guess i i gotta arrange it with him um <laughs> oh look who decided to come in like no winning hey dr cross stop yelling at people I... when they come into a room i'm so Steve. happy when people come in though i, I get <laughs> yeah, excited sorry, easily it doesn't take much he does days. i'm it's old yeah <laughs> so how are you been hello how are you hi how you doing We've been doing okay. I'm I, I, I don't know if you watched the beginning of this particular um, stream, but uh, although it's kind of that part of it has ended, so we're in the uh, the part where I say we're not going to go very long. We end up going long, but um, right. I don't know if you. I, I don't know if you agree with the logical system that we have. He tells me to come in, and then we just start chatting. Yeah, <laughs> and then it runs two hours versus the forty-five minutes that I had uh, allocated for it. But I don't know if you. I said I don't know if you watch my 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 streams on the logics that I put out there to go. Hey, look, you know, we don't care what you believe, but at least be consistent about it for God's sake. Yeah, consistency is definitely key. I mean, I'm a spiritual person, but I wouldn't say I'm like. Uh even agnostic i guess you know uh, traditional religion i guess you could call it that or traditions that don't really fit the religious kind of thing so i do watch the atheist stuff because so it's so fascinating well, i actually just it's like a good stuff. argument I, i'm gonna admit i like a good argument if you're gonna say something have a good argument back it up you know um even if i don't agree with it or in the end at least you know there was good arguments made uh yeah, that's kind of where I'm at, where I'm like, I don't care what you personally believe or don't disbelieve or do believe or don't believe. I care that what you said isn't stupid. It doesn't hurt my brain. <laughs> it doesn't make my brain cells explode one by one. <laughs> yeah, I don't like getting irritated by having to listen to people talk nonsense. So if you can not talk nonsense, I, I'm usually pretty happy about it. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to show this window capture to get you guys in the stream there, but it's for some reason OBS um, occasionally doesn't show it shows a black screen and, I, and I, you have to go in and kind of fiddle with it to fix it. So I, I can't get it to. Ca well, I had you to know fix what? mine I, today. I, you know OB what I'll do? I'll just Streamlabs did an update, yeah. so it reset everything. Yeah, so I got to go in and, and fix all that again because I, I noticed I had an update too because my virtual cam got screwed up. So I'm going to just yep. show my screen. I think that'd be the easiest way to fix that problem. And so give me a second here. I hate updates, but but yeah, Dr. Cross. Um, look, I, I I think spirituality is just fine. I I well, I'm the kind of person to say, look, I can listen to. Um, music uh, and appreciate it. and if I have a spiritual type feeling um, when you listen to, to, to awesome music or look at a fine art or something like that I have nothing um, against any of that I think it's perfectly fine for even atheists to go hey look there's no gods but you can still be somewhat spiritual and, and, and what they call in tune with nature kind of stuff I think that's kind of cool actually yeah you know um my uh, political stance is no gods, no masters. So it's interesting that I run into a lot of very toxic atheists that are like, oh, look at indigenous populations or African traditions or things like that and say, well, that's religion. And it's like, well, no, we're answering to nature.